All right, everybody, that's what we're doing today. Probably the last mod, probably really one of the last mods I'm gonna do on this bike. There really isn't anything left to do. You know, people are going, oh, you'll find something. I mean, I don't know, there really isn't much. So what we're doing today is we are putting on 17 tooth sprocket. Now, why am I gearing this up? Aren't, won't you lose acceleration? Yeah, a little bit, but it will make, um, It'll let me rev it out a little bit more. Well, I mean, you're going to the same revs, but it'll let me hold a gear a little bit longer without having to shift as often. Um, and make it a little less buzzy on the freeway. Technically, I may lose a little bit of acceleration, but I'm just not worried about it. I got an extra at least 10 horsepower over stock. I got better throttle response, everything. So what you gotta do first, loosen your axle nut. That's a 17 mil. You need a 12 and a 13 mil to loosen up your chain adjusters so that you can go uh, and move the seat, uh, real tire forward so you can get some uh, extra slack up here. You got two bolts and then two bolts down here. Remove those, take that cover off, set it aside. And then what you have to do is there is a bracket somewhere else we need to remove to get this off. And I believe that bracket is, let's see, probably that one right there. So it looks like we got another eight mil right there. So let's, does that feel like it's coming off? No, that's not it. So which one is it? Maybe it's this one right here. Let's see. Yeah. It's that one down there. It's the black one, not the silver one. So I don't know why they put the overflow <laughs> tank right there. So we gotta remove that. I'm guessing, of course I need a 10 millimeter for that. God forbid I get everything in one shot. Uh, let's see. We can remove this, then there's another bolt underneath we can get to. I uh -huh. Haven't done one of these before. Well, I'll take that back. I did do it on my street cup, which is probably the same kind of setup. So that's being held on by that. There's another bolt over here. Normally you just take the cover off and it's like three or four sprockets, like on the Yamaha or anything else. You just take those off and your sprockets right there. All right, so that comes off. Now I can maybe see where the other bracket is. Other bracket is holding that shit on. Come on, Triumph. You guys are boneheads with this crap. <sighs> All right. Let's see. Let's pull this hose up and out. <clears throat> Drain hose. Okay. Get ourselves a little bit of slack that way. So this is held in. There it is. It's in behind right here. And that is an eight millimeter. It's that one right down in there. All right, get that out of the way, get that out of the way. Now we can get to this. So what we have to do is see how that lip right there is bent over. That's a lock ring. So we need to get a screwdriver and a hammer and bend that out. And then we're gonna need what looks like a 32 or maybe a 34 mil. Let's see. That looks like it might be about right. Like a glove. All right, cool. So that is a 36 mil 
And now, where is my shit? Robert's been working on a scooter for days and none of my, well, not none of, some of my shit does not end up back where it's supposed to be. So I'm gonna run around looking for my tools, Robert. So, what we've got to do is get that lock ring bent out. I don't know where my small screwdrivers went. Okay, so basically, we bend that out the way. Now, take our impact, holding the back tire so that it can't spin. Boom. I don't know what the torque setting, so if someone's like, what's the torque setting? I have no idea. I'm just taking it off, putting it back on, torquing it down. Give it as many ooga oogas as you think it takes. And now, we get to sit here. Why is that not budging? All right, so that comes off. interesting. I've never had a sprocket not want to come off before. It's loose. Huh. I swear to God, nothing is ever easy on freaking Euro bikes. All right, so we're going to get some paper towels and spray some WD-40 in there. Because again, why would shit work? Never fucking does. I'm gonna try to get this in there without it getting all over the place. And... Huh. There we go. So if you get enough slack in there, you should be able to slip that out. All right, the new one, which is part number JTF1186, and then the 17 is the number of teeth. So the stock one is a 16 tooth. This is a 17 tooth. It came off with the uh, number facing outward. This doesn't seem to be offset at all, so it shouldn't matter. But I'm doing it the same thing with the number of teeth and the lettering facing out. And if we got enough slack, and if not, go to the back wheel. And put some more slack in from the other side. There we go. Now, I should have enough slack to get this in, and then you just gotta kinda wiggle it around. Nothing is ever simple. So 
Now you gotta try to slowly rotate this. There we go, it's on. <sighs> Lock ring, back on. The nut with that recessed part facing inward. Make sure that that lock ring doesn't fall off the teeth. All right, so now that's in there. So now we're gonna give it a couple ooga oogas this way. That's plenty tight. It can't go anywhere when you, when you uh, get that lock ring back. And so all you gotta do, get your hammer. That's it. See that little bit? That, that's not a washer. That washer is splined. It goes onto that shaft and fits in those grooves. So that thing can't spin. So with that metal now pressed up against that, that thing can't loosen. There's no way it's going anywhere. So now we need to put uh, this back on, which uh, need both hands. goes in like that. Make sure there's no wires or hoses or anything behind it pinched in. And that bolt goes back in there. What you want to do is get this lined up. put in this screw down here on the bottom. Okay, snug that up. And then this goes back onto those screws that are kind of anchored in there. So let's get that one in first. Come on. There we go. One on top. And then these nuts. Yeah, you heard me. These nuts. The 10 mils. They go back on. So let's do that. Let's put on these nuts. So not too bad actually. I mean, a little bit of a pain getting some of the stuff, and for some reason that shaft is super tight, man. Nobody can just wiggle those things right off. All right, so those are in there. This hose gets tucked back into this little metal, uh, like a retaining clip kind of thing, just to keep it where it wants to be. All right, so we put in that screw, well, that nut onto that nut, and the rest are all in this cover. So let's go ahead and put this back in. Get these all lined up. Start to tighten them just with your finger. Make sure the threading is straight. You're not getting anything cross-threaded. Go back to the 8 mil. Once we are done with this, all we got to do is uh, reset our chain slack. So, That'll be uh, pretty straightforward. So tighten these up. Get them slightly snug. Right. And tighten them all down. I don't know what the foot pounds, the inch pounds, the newton meters is. Just don't over tighten it. Just eh. snug them up till they hit, till you bottom out, and then go. Eh. That's all you need. 
That's about 15, 18 foot-pounds. I'm very well calibrated. Okay. All right. That is tight. All right, we are all done with that. And now, all we got to do is just reset our chain slack. So start moving that wheel back, then tighten it, I think, to 150 foot-pounds or something like that. So all I got to do is just manually pull the tire back tight instead of with the wrench trying to do it a little bit at a time. Basically, just pull the wheel tight with your hand and then move these back because it's faster with your fingers to just do this than to put the wrench on, move it a quarter turn, move the wrench off, move the red, you know, move, you know, all that kind of crap. So basically, pull it back because you just pulling back on it will, you know, tighten it up a little bit, but it's not going to be like tight. And you want it tight, trust me. You really definitely want it tight. Well, not too tight. All right. So get that in place. Check your chain slack. And then, yeah, that's just almost right. So uh, what I do to check my chain slack. Here we go. Get some of the grease off my hands. Chain lube. Clean my hands a little bit because I may be touching the tire and I was just touching the chain. So this won't throw off your Speedo, the old days of needing Speedo healers and all that shit. Don't apply anymore. With uh, ABS and modern traction control, you've got uh, wheel speed sensors on the wheels. So no matter what gearing changes you make, it's picking it up off those other sensors so it knows what the bike's actually doing. All right, got all that. Go the grease and the oil chain wax off my fingers. So what I do to set chain slack, on this bike you need a 12 and 13 mil. Because you got your, your lock nut right there. That's a 13, this one's a 12. Which I like when manufacturers do that because otherwise you need to have two 12s or two 13s. And if you just have like a set of wrenches, you might not have two of the same. So now what I do is I kind of get the chain slack to where I want on the chain side. What I'm gonna do is tighten this just a little bit. It's almost perfect. So now what I want to do is take a measurement. Now you can just use the notches. I found that those aren't always that accurate. So you get your set of digital calipers. And if it's got that little extension there, I will go like that. And I see 22 mils. So then I'm going to go to the other side here. and see where this side's at. And this side is 17mm. Is at 17 mils. So what that means is this side's out farther than the other. So I need to turn that in a little bit. push that in. Now when I'm doing that, that was off by five, it was off by half a centimeter. So I may have to then go and check the other side to make sure I'm at the tension that I, this, we're at 19. So what I'm going to do is loosen this one that little bit more, get it down to like 20-ish. And then check the tension over here. Yeah, that loosened up. So now is I'm going to end up shortening this side. So I'm going to take a couple clicks in here. All right, we check this side. Twenty-one point six four. This side. 
20.13. It's still just a little loose on this side, so instead of adding on that side, I'm going to take out a little bit. So with this side, twenty point one four twenty one. I'm going to do one more click over here. Point eight. That is close enough. Actually, it's too tight now. <laughs> We're going to take out one click on each side. Now, what I'm calling a click is each flat. So the, there's a flat on top. I'm going to move it to the next flat. We're going to leave. And then we're going to hit the tire forward. Check our slack, we're good. All right, we are set for 150 foot pounds. Keep this one steady, thread this one in by hand, careful not to turn your adjuster, and we're going to hold this one steady, and we're going to tighten that. And that keep our adjustment so it does not loosen as we get on the road. Hold that one from twisting. Okay, we're done. Put all your tools off to the side. And uh, let's check. Perfect. We are spot on. So let's go over everything real quick. Let's see, we tighten up the axle, 150 foot-pounds. Those are adjusted. They went half a millimeter of each other. Chain slack is good. We tighten the inner bolts, the inner nuts. These four are tight. We're good to go. So what I'm gonna do now is uh, go get dressed. Well, I mean, I have clothes on. I'm not doing this buck naked, or am I? Now we're going to come back and we're going to take it for a ride and see how it feels. So be right back. doesn't sap too much acceleration. You know, hold a gear a little longer, not
normally on a stock bike. Nah, I don't feel like I'm, I mean, I'm sure if it was on a dyno or a drag strip, I may have lost a little bit, but I'm only changing the RPMs by about 350 to 400. me that when I am on the interstate and cruising along at 80, 85, something like that, it won't be quite as buzzy, which doesn't normally bother me. Again, it's if I'm if I'm drag racing light, it's like I almost want to start in second because first gear just wants to go burp and wheelie. And either I gotta cut back or traction cuts back. And then it's um I'm shifting, shifting, shifting. You know, I'm in third gear by the time the six hundred next to me is going from into from first into second I'm already up into third somewhere so I'm like well maybe this will actually help even though if technically in any given gear but honestly like I don't feel much of a I mean it's only a five six percent difference but I went up a tooth in the front which is equal to two and a half to three down on the back so it's a significant change and uh, let's see let's go Let's go this way. I mean, does it still wheelie? Pump one wheel. What I need to do is turn off the traction control and see how much it actually wheelies. Like I don't, I feel like it lost a little bit. It had to have. There's no way it didn't. It had to have. But it ain't much. That'll be nice, I think, going from a dig or low speed stuff where like, Seconds just a little too high of a gear, like if I'm going really slow speed, or maybe like uh, on Wolfpen Gap or something where I'm in third is a little too high, seconds just a little too low of a gear. I, I have noticed that a bit. A lot of guys do it because they're like, I want to save gas on the interstate. It's like, I just don't give a shit about gas. I don't own 460 horsepower horse, uh, you know, cars and big 1200 and ZX-14s and R1s and shit, you know, for fuel economy. So that's not my concern. A little less buzzy, just turning less revs on the interstate is nice. But really it's more about making first a little bit more usable. Yeah, I don't feel like the acceleration. I mean, I hit 90-ish in third. Now, I haven't increased my top speed at all. This bike's stock. If you can hit rev limit, if, if you can hit the rev limiter at 8,006 gear, this bike's stock is geared to go like 152. It'll never do that. Just doesn't have the horsepower and the aerodynamics. So that is not in the cards. But, uh, it, it's, it's electronically limited to, 134 anyway, so you're just never going to hit those kinds of speeds. Yeah, it pulls, it feels great. Real quick and just see what it turns at. But I'm not noticing. I, I was expecting a loss and I was expecting a noticeable loss in acceleration. Something that I would feel. I know it's there, but I'm expecting like, oh, I go, ugh. But my thought was, well, maybe overall it'll be acceptable because the trade-off would be 
gear a little longer before I have to shift. And sometimes that's desirable. I mean, you can gear a bike down for super torque, but if you're like, shift, 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 shift constantly, then it's like, well, are you really going faster? With a quick shifter or something like that, yeah, maybe. But, uh, on a bike like this, I'm not so sure. I'll let those guys get up a little bit ahead. second and see how quick would have been up around 43 44 so it's definitely lowered my rpms made it a little if i get up to the rpms i was at before i'd be doing like almost 90. so that's nice it lowered it a little bit so it looks like we'll get just a little more fuel economy it's a little less buzzy a little nicer a little more purring along at 